My name is Anthony Riccadelli. Uh, I'm a member of Collin County Young Republicans and I'm blessed to represent the people of the great city of Plano uh, on the Plano City Council Place 2. My name is Lynn Walling. I'm part of the Collin County Young Republican Club and I'm running for Plano Board of Trustees Place 3. My name is Justin Adcock. I'm running for Plano City Council Place 4 and I'm a member of the Collin County Young Republicans. Sure, I'm seeking a position on the Plano City Council. It's, you could think of it like a large organization. You have the mayor, which is the CEO, and the city council is the board of directors that kind of determines the future of the city and the, the plan going forward, if you will. I serve on the city council. There are eight members of the city council elected for four-year terms. Uh, we are essentially the board of directors of the, the city of Plano. We're the legislative body, but we have some functions that are uh, not only legislative, but also executive or even quasi-judicial. Uh, as many of you may know, uh, Plano, like uh, I think most Texas cities, has what's called a council manager form of government. So we as city council members are not full-time city employees. We're, we're just people who decided to, to step up and and, uh, and, and represent the community on the council. Uh, the city manager is a full-time employee and is like the CEO of the city. Uh, he reports to the council who exercises oversight over him. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we vote on uh, all kinds of different matters, you know, from uh, the budget uh, to uh, land use and zoning to uh, uh, city contracts and, and, and too many other things to name. We'd be here all day if I tried to go into all of them, but uh, that's, uh, that's the, the city council in a nutshell. It's uh, a group of seven board members total. I'm running for place three, but it's at large. Um, the school board oversees um, administration in Plano school districts. Um, they're more oversight than governance. Um, but they handle the budget, construction projects. Um, they also hire the superintendent or fire the superintendent, um, as well as um, working with educators and parents on deciding curriculum and things like that. For me, it was when I found out that a retail development that was right behind our neighborhood was uh, seeking to redevelop into a high density neighborhood. It was something that was gonna affect you know, me personally, uh, my kids' school, it could double or triple the class sizes. It would increase traffic, lower property values. And seeing how this has the potential to start affecting people all over our community and city, it was the moment where I decided to get involved. I don't know if it was so much a, a specific moment. It was really uh, um, a lifetime of, uh, of passion for uh, this community for good public policy and for using my talents to serve. I want to make an impact. You know, I, I uh, um, one thing I say is that when I die, I want to be like an empty tube of toothpaste. You know, I want to have squeezed out everything useful that I've got and, and uh, you know, put it to good use. So um, I think it was, you know, it was the culmination of conversations where I, I had served on the, the Plano Heritage Commission as vice chair of that commission. and conversations with uh, then current council members and, and uh, folks in the community encouraging me to run and uh, and then uh, you know uh, obviously uh, uh, talking about it with my wife and praying about it and deciding this was a good avenue to, to, to give back by by using our talents. I think it was when I was working with Dallas GOP as an intern and working on campaigns um, I started coming to the conclusion that I can talk all I want and complain all I want about how things are running or happening but um, nothing's going to change unless I like take action. So um, my new city um, positions were coming up for election and I felt like I could actually you know try to make a difference this time and run for school board. You know with with any elected office you you put yourself out there basically to be judged by the voters that you know overcoming that mindset that you might lose or you you know, that fear of, of, you know, going out there and putting yourself out there and failing uh, was really big for me. I, you know, it's, it's something you have, it's always in the back of your mind, but the desire to, to better yourself, better your city, and to make life better for, for people in your community ultimately outweighs that. Um, the second is, is the money issue. That's, you know, it costs a lot to run an election. So 
uh, having people that got behind me early on and, and said that they would support me, they would get out there, uh, you know, walking neighborhoods and putting out signs. It was it was a real boost, you know, personally to know that I had that backing. The two, the two biggest were probably. Um, how am I going to run a campaign and how am I going to win? Because uh, it took, we honestly didn't expect that it would take this many, but it, it, it took uh, about 10,000 votes to win. We had nearly nearly 12,000 votes in the first round. And uh, if I recall correctly, 9,000 and some in the in the runoff. And uh, you know, and, and uh, when I started running, I thought, well, I don't know that many people. I mean, you know, I know some people, but how am I going to get the word out? How am I going to campaign? Uh, you know, and, and, and how am I going to run successfully and not just, you know, not just have the, you know, the few hundred people who I personally know vote for me. How do you run a campaign? Um, but I really found that, that by God's grace, you know, one step at a time, as our message got out, people stepped up to say, I can help, I can knock on doors, I can call my friends. You know, I can I can phone bank, I can pull greed, I, I can do all of the many other things that are required to have a successful campaign. I can I can donate, you know, and so uh, uh, many, many other things. And so step by step, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we built a successful campaign. Definitely my age, um, because I know most people don't when they think of the school board. Um, trustee they don't think of a person in their 20s um, and also just funding and you know how am I gonna you know raise money and get my name out there um, so people know to vote for me overcoming those issues with my age um, I feel like once people start to talk to me and realize what I stand for and what I believe in um, then they look past my age uh, I'm very um, patriotic so I believe curriculum in the classroom should be you know state and national heritage should be respected and appreciated and taught um, I also went to Plano schools myself so I have um, a connection with people of all ages so that's one way I overcame age and then um, for funding I've done a lot of self-funding as well but um, I've actually had a lot of people just shockingly uh, after meeting with parents you know like wanting to donate to my campaign and help me out any way they can. So I've actually met a lot of great people who are like super helpful. So I had never hold, held a government office before. I did uh, student government in high school and college, which which is a little the same, but, but quite different. Um, I was actually on a board for the Texas Department of Licensing and Insurance um, that, that kind of got me prepared for the whole legislative process you know there's there's a certain order that things have to be done in and it kind of, kind of gets you in that mind frame of, of planning budgeting and the whole you know slew of other things you need to know for government as I mentioned I served as vice chair of the Plano Heritage Commission which is a position to which I was appointed by the Plano City Council that's the historic preservation commission uh, here in Plano and uh, I think working with the city staff having sat at the council dais and you know, having some familiarity with procedure uh, helped uh, helped me be prepared to, to serve on the council. I had also uh, served in, and, and still serve uh, in volunteer capacities, including on a, a number of uh, boards and, and committees that I, I currently and, and previously served on, uh, uh, including uh, Johnny and Friends, the, the regional board of advisors for Johnny and Friends, which is a ministry to those impacted by disability and their families. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, portfolio Advisory Board for Texas Women Ventures, uh, the um, uh, professional committees through Dallas Association of, of Young Lawyers, uh, the Host Benefit Committee for uh, a Benefit for International Justice Mission, and uh, you know many, many others. Uh, I've since been appointed by Governor Abbott to the Red River Boundary Commission. This is uh, after I've been serving on council. Uh, and so some, at, at some point when, uh, 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 when, when we're able to get a, a counterpart uh, committee from, from Oklahoma, we can work out a little a little uh, boundary issue along the Red River but uh, it, I really think that all of that experience you know uh, being involved in the community uh, having experience working with people and, and serving on boards and committees that really um, that really helps to prepare you to function in a role like this so, so thank you for that question I've never held a 
actual position. Um, I did serve as a marketing intern with Dallas GOP, so I did work on campaigns then. So I understand the concept of block walking and uh, texting and phone calling. Um, although it was just a first step into realizing what a, running one's campaign actually is. <laughs> it's a lot more work than just that. So. Well, one of the first things I had to do early on was was find people, again, to, to have that emotional, uh, to have that, that backing, that support that you need. Uh, once you find a group of like-minded people like the Young Republicans, and there's different organizations here in town that share your values and share your beliefs, um, it, it makes it a lot easier to, you know, to find out what people are concerned with. Uh, the direction that they would like to see the city go. One of the biggest things that I did was actually sit down and read through the 375 city page city budget, which lays out you know everything that's going to be spent, and you see in detail where your money's going, and that that raised a lot of red flags for me. The first thing I did before we even decided to run, when uh, when my wife and I were still thinking about whether to run, uh, was to reach out to current office holders and talk to them both about uh, what the experience of being an elected official is like and, uh, and, and what it takes to be successful in a campaign. So I would recommend that to anybody who's thinking about running. Get advice from people who have been there and done that because that advice is invaluable. Then uh, I think talking to people in the community, uh, making an honest appraisal of, uh, of whether you have the support and can build the support that's necessary to, to either have a successful campaign or a campaign that makes an impact. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes it, it's good to run, you know, even, even if you don't ultimately win, you can help shape the policy debate and, and, and help uh, highlight issues that are important to you. Um, so I'm not, not discouraging anybody from running, even if they don't think there's a tremendous chance of success. I think there's, there's value in that, but uh, seeking advice so that you can run an effective campaign and then, uh, um, building grassroots support in the community you know I'm, I'm grassroots myself and you know and and uh, uh, have, have been involved on the grassroots level I'm still involved on the grassroots level so uh, I think that uh, that that you know really building grassroots support is, is also uh, key a lot of research uh, I was as soon as I submitted or even before I submitted um, my candidacy seat I uh, started researching everything school board related, looked at their legislative priorities, any uh, terms or funds I didn't understand, looked into them, looked them up, um, had detailed notes on them. I wanted to understand every part of the position that I was running for and that way I knew what I was talking about when I was, you know, while I'm campaigning. Um, I also reached out to a lot of people that I've networked with in the past, uh, people that live in Plano, let them know that I was running, um, especially um, old like clients of mine from when I was a banker that I know have kids in the school system. I've set up interviews with them and talked to them about their concerns and what they like and don't like. Um, also had the opportunity to talk to a lot of kids in elementary school and how it is in the classroom for them today. So. It's basically another full-time job. It's, uh, you know, you're putting in eight hours a day on the weekend, um, several hours a day uh, during the week. I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home, so I have a little bit of flexibility. I can get out and work a little bit in the morning, work a little in the afternoons, but it's, it's essentially another full-time job. It's a pretty significant time commitment. Uh, it varies from month to month, depending on what's going on during budget season, uh, uh, which starts in July and ends at the first meeting in September with the adoption of the budget. Uh, it, it can sometimes uh, uh, feel like a full-time job or some other, you know, um, which it's not, it's a part-time job. Uh, um, and uh, we, get, we do get a $1,000 a month stipend, which I really appreciate because every penny of that is the taxpayer's hard-earned money. Um, but it's, it's obviously not intended to be a full-time job. My, my day job is as an attorney. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it's, it's, I mean, I would probably guess that in the average month, it's, uh, uh, maybe a 50 hour a month time commitment, uh, some months more than that, some months less, and when you're campaigning a lot more. Right now, uh, you know, I'm campaigning, early voting will start in, in less than a month, and uh, uh, I wish I was spending just 50 hours a month on that, but no, it's, it's a, a gigantic time commitment when you're campaigning, but it's also well worth it. I feel like, in all honesty, it should be a full-time position. Um, but because I have an actual job, I'm not able to dedicate as much time as that. But uh, 
I mean, I feel like to truly be successful, you it needs a lot of time spent on it just to get your name out there. Well, for Plano in particular, you know, they say Collin County is the bastion of conservatism for the state of Texas and how Collin County goes, that's how Texas goes. So just from that perspective, we need we need conservatives in office that will push, you know, fiscal conservatism, government transparency, transparency and accountability. Um, we, we need conservatives at all levels of government, you know. We're fighting, we're fighting a, a political battle as well as a cultural battle, and to have people that we know and trust in those positions uh, is comforting. I think it's important to have conservative representation on city councils because of our philosophy of limited government, uh, because of the council's oversight role and uh, uh, how we believe in uh, restraining the, the power of government and restraining uh, spending and, and uh, being fiscally responsible. The council sets the budget uh, for the city and, and along with that sets the tax rate. Uh, and uh, it's important to uh, make sure that, that as we're making decisions about taxation, we have an understanding of fiscal responsibility. And, uh, and also, I, I think we have a view that the people really are the boss, that government answers to the people. I'm, I'm a we the people kind of guy and I think it's important to have that on the city council because uh, because ultimately we do work for the people and it's important to have council members who remember that. A woman once said whoever controls the education of our children controls the future um, and I feel like for the longest time um, some radical ideologies have been in control of education and you're seeing the consequences of it today. So um, I believe that conservatives need to get, it, get into the um, board and realize, or, and make sure the curriculum is not propaganda, it's not biased, it's telling the whole story. Um, I also really care about America and America's future and I believe that the America's future is in the classroom right now. Sure. I think the next step is get involved. Get involved with your young Republican group. Get involved with other, uh, you know, similar organizations where you meet people, you understand the political process. Get involved helping with another campaign. So when it comes time, you you know what's going on. You know the steps that need to be taken. I feel like I, I wasn't as involved because I have four kids at home. They take up a lot of time. I have a small business that I run. Uh, so when it came time for me to actually step up and run, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I would have had a huge head start had I been more involved at the local level for years before. Uh, my, my advice, as I've highlighted in a couple of other questions, would be to, uh, to, to first of all, to get involved, uh, to get involved as, as a grassroots volunteer, as I'm sure everyone watching this interview is, uh, to get involved in your community in, in a volunteer capacity, uh, in, including uh, as opportunities become available, serving on boards and committees uh, for nonprofits and 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 uh, organizations that you're passionate about in your community, and uh, uh, serving on a uh, if you're thinking about running for city council specifically, uh, serving on a city board or commission if uh, if that opportunity presents itself, and and of course actively seeking out that opportunity, all of those things will help you be prepared. Uh, then, uh, if, if you're thinking maybe the time is now, uh, and and you're getting ready to gear up for a campaign, I would advise you to talk to uh, current and former candidates and elected officials so that you understand uh, both what it takes to govern and also what it takes to get there through the campaign. To run a, a robust, successful campaign, uh, you, you will learn uh, uh, invaluable lessons from those who have been there and done that. And that way, instead of uh, learning from your own mistakes, you can learn from the mistakes of others and you can also learn what's worked well for them and be prepared to be successful. So uh, I would have all of that advice uh, for those who are uh, considering uh, throwing their hat in the ring and stepping into the, into the arena. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help um, from anyone, whether it's you know people you know through work or friends or family. Um, get involved more with your um, local GOP offices um, and because they always have great network. Uh, individuals that you can network with. Um, go to meetings and don't be, uh, don't be afraid. Like, it, even though it's a scary concept, like, um, the only way, 
you can make a difference is to take action and, and sometimes uh, it will pay off. <laughs>